rising heights of the economy. The banks, I would say that, you know, I bet, you know, <laughs> very often I say, look, I'm not an extremist. I'm not an extreme man. I'm not advocating anything. I don't want to nationalize everything. All I want to, is to nationalize three little things. That's all. The land, the banks, and the big monopolies. That's all. The rest, they can, they can stay in private hands. Not interested in the rest. In fact, we'd offer cheap credits to the small businesses, small firms who need it to survive. Why not? Offer them. They've been ripped off by the middlemen and by the big supermarkets and by the big distributing companies and, and the trucking companies and above all the banks. And we'd offer them cheap credits. Why not? Let me ask now, you this, that, uh, Mr. Woods. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. if the crooks we have in power right now were the ones to, to yeah. do this nationalization. These crooks are not um, going to do this to benefit us. They're going to do that to benefit themselves. Now, how do we get the crooks out of there? Ah, no, that's, that's a fundamental question. You see, Bernie raised the question of a political revolution against the billionaire class. I think that's an interesting slogan. But it needs to be concretized. It needs to be specified, doesn't it? I, I would call, first of all, we have, we have to carry it. We have, we have to take a broom and sweep out all those crooks. When the Bolsheviks took power in Russia, this is an interesting point. When 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 Lenin and Trotsky took power in Russia, it was on the basis of a, a massive, popular, democratic movement. It was extremely democratic, the most democratic movement in history. What they introduced was that no official in the state, in any nationalized industry, for example, or the government, including the president, should receive a higher wage than a than a skilled worker. Nobody. Nobody. And that was pursued under, under Lenin. It was changed under Stalin, but it, 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 that was the policy. Now, that would be the policy for the USA also, you know, that uh, the, 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 the industry should be national, but they should be taken over under workers' control and management. We don't want any state bureaucracy or uh, fat cats to, uh, taking over the nationalized industry. It should be under the democratic control of the working class. That's the first point. And no, no director or factory manager or politician should, or elected person, should receive a higher wage than a skilled worker and should be subject to the right of recall at all times. If they don't do as they, what we expect them to do, they should be kicked out immediately and replaced with somebody who will. That, by the way, was the program of the Bolshevik Party in 1917. I think it's perfectly applicable to the states, don't you? So for the United States, you would not advocate for a centralized uh, government as in the Soviet Union. You would, you would advocate for states' rights, uh, states' control. Well, not exactly. I, I'm in favor of central central planning, but it's got to be under democratic control. There's, there's no contradiction between these two things, you know. I mean, it, it, there's no point in splitting up industries into, into little local state state uh, right units that would be detrimental to the economy. That's no good. Central planning is good. By the way, central planning in the Soviet Union worked brilliantly. That's a, that's an element which is never given its due. You know, <clears throat> that's that's what enabled to win the Second World War against Hitler. It was, it was a centralized planned economy that, that definitely worked in the Soviet Union. There's no two ways about it. Uh, but, but of course, that was under bureaucrat. Now that's what I expect to say to your friend, your American hypothetical uh, mm. critic of, of communism. We do not advocate the type of system they had in Russia under Stalin. Of, uh, that, was, that was not socialism, that was not communism. That was a bureaucratic and totalitarian caricature of socialism. Nothing to do with ideas of Marx. And then, that we do not want. American people are wedded to democracy, and it's good that they're wedded to democracy. You know, the only thing is, of course, Russia was a very backward country in, in 1970, extremely backward, like more backward than Pakistan today. America is an, an advanced, wealthy country, which under, under socialist planning could carry out what the Bolsheviks attempted to carry out, and of course they were not able to fulfill that because of the backwardness of Russia. But in America, that's a different type of fits. Can you, so then, your ideal, you could point to a, a successful execution of Marxism? Well, I think Russia was, initially. Initially, the, the early days of the Russian Revolution. It was a, a, a model of a democratic uh, society, dem uh, m much more democratic than what America or Britain is at the present time, mm. for instance. And as far as the nationalized plan, despite the bureaucracy, despite the, the Stalinist regime, which, by the way, was a counter-revolution against the Bolshevik Party, which 
Stalin could only succeed in coming to power by exterminating mm. the Bolshevik. That little detail is frequently forgotten. But the, Stalinism and Bolshevism are two separate things, yes, but what they left was, uh, was the fundamental economic gains of the revolution, the, the, the nationalization and the planned economy succeeded brilliantly. For goodness sake, you can't provide a single example in history of a country that, 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 that went from an extreme backward state in 1917. I mean, I'll give, you, I'll give you one example. Uh, how many Rus- how many industrial workers were in Russia in 1917? I'll tell you, less less than four million, with a population of 150 million, extremely backward. Uh, and and uh, the, the revolution transferred transformed what was a very backward third world country into an advanced industrial nation, with an advanced education system, with an advanced health system. Just one little element, you see, even when the Soviet Union collapsed, which it did because of the bureaucratic uh, mismanagement and so on, but nevertheless, the CIA itself admitted in the 1980s the Soviet, the Soviet space program was 10 years in advance of the U.S. Mm. at that time. So uh, to, uh, now we try to say, well, it didn't achieve anything. It was a failure. It was not a failure. I think it achieved quite a lot. On the basis of an advanced American, uh, an economy like the U.S., eh? Of course, you'd, you'd set up from a far higher base, and therefore you could achieve a damn sight more than what that's an average. Mr. Woods, we only have a couple of minutes left. Uh, what would you like to leave uh-huh. us with? Well, uh, first of all, hope. Hmm. I think they've been short supply there in this city. No, no, no. I have any confidence in the ability of the American people <clears throat> to draw the necessary conclusions from the present crisis. And uh, they, they, they are learning. You know, Lenin used to say, uh, life teaches, and life is teaching a lot of lessons to a lot of people. So that's very good. And the other thing is I would encourage you to, to look at the website, as you mentioned, marxist.com, and see what you think of our ideas. Tomorrow, by the way, is the 1st of May, which, of course, was organized, first of all, in Chicago in the USA. And we intend to celebrate the, US, the, the, the May Day on our website tomorrow, and we invite you approximately at this time, half an hour earlier or so, to, to join us in celebrating the, the International Festival of the World Working Class. Because socialism is worldwide or it is nothing. You know, it's fascinating. Every year on May Day, every year on May Day, all the labor unions, all the workers come out. You never see the, the capitalists uh, celebrating the workers. They've got enough to celebrate every day. They don't need a special day to celebrate. <laughs> That's what they're celebrating free. Yeah, free labor. Celebrating, celebrating slavery, yes. Yeah. And Mr. Woods, I enjoyed this very much. I can't thank you enough. Anything you ever want to promote and come on the show or is something on your mind you want to talk about, just let me know. I'd love to have you back. My pleasure, Ed. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. also want to thank uh, Mr. Trottier, who uh, helped us book this guest, too, as well. Uh, we had him on last week. Um, I forget his name. The name is Socialist.org, I think is the name of his website. Socialistrevolution.org uh, was the website. Thank you so much, Alan Woods. And you want to check out Mr. Woods' uh, books, The Venezuelan Revolution, A Marxist Perspective. Uh, also, too, Franco, but the, you know, Franco in, in Spain there, uh, The Great Betrayal, uh, Reason and Revolt. The website is Marxist.com. And hey, don't forget, don't forget, GetVocal.com every Thursday night live. I need people to go there and sign up uh, and uh, pop into the chat room, the live thing there, because, uh, you know, it's, listen, I'll be honest with you, okay? <laughs> All right. I'm a worker, okay? And this is a paid gig. This is my job. And I need some, uh, what do you call uh, viewers over there so these get vocal guys uh, stop nagging me. And, uh, you know, their checks don't start bouncing on me, if you know what I mean. Uh, so we need you guys to get in there. If you want to help support the show, that's a good way to help support the show. You get extra content. You get video. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to be doing my Chippendales uh, routine this evening. I'm going to shave my back and do my little, got my G-string out. Me and uh, Mark Dibner. Thank you so much. (laughs) Good night.